All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to do a very cute exercise in linear algebra that concerns both linear independence and range. So, and here's the an exercise. And it's an exercise, let's see, exercise uh, 13 in 2.2 uh, of the Friedberg book. So suppose, this is off to a good start. Uh, suppose V and W are vector spaces and T and U are linear transformations from V to W, and they're both non-zero. And suppose that somehow, if you take the range of T and the range of U, they're basically disjoint. And suppose the range of T intersect range of U Again, the range is just a set of all possible outputs of T or U. Well, technically, they're subspaces, so they can't be completely disjoint. But let's suppose that their intersection is just a zero vector. And let's show that it turns out T and U have to be independent of each other. So let's show that this set T, U, is linearly independent in the space of linear transformations from V to W. It's a beautiful L of V and W. And this is a really neat statement. In other words, let's say we're in R2. So let's say W is in R2. So W is R2. And suppose that, and again, V is any vector space, okay? Suppose T takes all of V and maps it, let's say, to the line y equals x. So suppose this is r of t, and u maps all of v and maps it, let's say, to the line y equals minus x. If somehow their intersections don't cross, if somehow their ranges don't cross, then it turns out t and u are linearly independent. It's very neat. It's almost like if you have two cars that don't really cross, then there's no accident in some sense. But um, that said, I think uh, in general this is wrong. You know, uh, if we don't assume the range is all of zero, because there are lots of uh, linearly independent linear transformations that are, for example, onto R two. All right. And so, how do you show this is linearly independent? So proof. Suppose that, for example, AT plus BU equals to the zero vector, but here it's the zero vector in the space of linear transformations. So it's the zero linear transformation. And remember that T and U are non-zero, so in particular there's a vector for which T of X is non-zero. So uh, then pick X with t of x non-zero and you'll see why uh, and you see this is an equality in linear transformations in particular this equality it's true whichever x you apply it to so in particular it's true if you apply it to this specific x then we get at plus bu of x equals the zero transformation at x so this is ATX plus BUX equals zero. And then let's just play around with this. So ATX equals minus BUX. And so because it was tax season, we get TAX equals to U minus BX. And that just follows because uh, T and U are linear. And now notice, this is another really cute trick that's very popular in linear algebra. Because, well, this thing, it's of the form T of something. So T of AX, well, that is in the range of T, just by definition of the range of T. But this equals to U of minus BX. This is also the form u of something, 
So it's in the range of u. So what we get is t of ax, and again, it doesn't matter that we have two different vectors. As long as it's of the form t of something, it's in the range. So t of ax is actually in both spaces. r of t intersect r of u. But we know by assumption that this is zero. So what this tells us is t of ax has to be the zero vector. And what we get then is that if you put a outside, a t x is the zero vector. But that's a problem because you see, we assume this is non-zero. So how can a t x be zero? Well, the only possibility is that a is zero. In other words, here a is zero, and then what we're left then is then b u is t0. Bu is t0. But again, we assume that u is not the zero transformation, and that's why uh, the only way a multiple of u could be the zero transformation is if that multiple is zero. Well, if you want to pick any y, where u is non-zero, then you get buy equals zero, and then b has to be zero. And then we're done. We assume some linear transformation gives you the zero transformation, and we showed a and b are zero. Cute, huh? That's right. It's a linear algebra cookie. Uh, all right, I hope you like this little math snack, if you want. Uh, if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.